Hey, this is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and in this episode, I get a chance to talk to Roger Mooking from Manfire Food. If you haven't seen the show, you got to check it out. If you like barbecue, if you like meat, if you like fire, <laughs> it's just the perfect show. It's awesome. Uh, check the cooking channel. It's in season seven right now, and it's just uh, spectacular. And he, he's a great host, and, and you'll be familiar with him. He's had a number of shows before. We talk about his history. We talk about his background. Uh, we talk about uh, growing up in Canada. We talk about how he got into the food food business, from the entertainment, from music to food, how he got his initial show, and then how Manfire Food got started, and his favorite barbecue spots, and favorite meat joints, and favorite restaurants in Los Angeles, because he's in Los Angeles a lot. It's a, it's a really cool episode. I can't thank Roger enough for taking the time. And if you're digging these, please subscribe. That way I show up in your feed. I get two of these out per week. I've got a large backlog of ones that I want to get out. They're, they're incredible. I know you're going to love them. Also, if you go to my website at kevinsbbqjoints.com, I have links to all my YouTube stuff. I even have links to all the podcast stuff. I have interviews with Daniel Vaughn, Sam Jones, Rodney Scott, Billy Durney, just tons of tons of people. So I would love for you to have a chance to see those interviews and hear those interviews. It's um, They're really great. I also have a podcast. Just type Kevin's BBQ Joints in your podcast network. You can check that out. But enjoy this. Are you in, are you in Los Angeles right now? I'm in Los Angeles at the moment, boss. How are you? I, I'm <laughs> I'm doing all right. So then it is good morning. I said enough. If, if you were in Toronto, I'd say like good afternoon. But it's well, yeah. <laughs> so what's what's today look like? What's your week look like? Uh, today I'm just out here, just meeting with some people, seeing some friends, stuff like that. You know. So do you uh, do you come to Los Angeles a lot? Uh, generally, if I'm coming out this area, it's I'm filming shows for different things. Like I do guys grocery games sometimes, you know, man, fire food. We come out to this area a lot. So it's usually for that kind of work related stuff. Most often is guys grocery games. Is that filmed in Burbank? Well, I can't tell you where it's oh, is, that, is that a secret? Okay, cool. That's already the first it's in California state. I'll tell you that <laughs> it's in somewhere in California because it's California small. So we'll find it. <laughs> well, cool well so how did you get your start i, w- I want to know that i think a lot of people would be interested to know um uh, my, my start in what specifically in the culinary world did you were you cooking as a child yeah i was cooking as a child three years old i knew i wanted to be a chef and when i was about 15 i got a job working in restaurants and like you know bad family diner kind of thing so i did that for years and i did music at the same time i used to take all my mu- money from the restaurant and do music oh, and- i didn't know that yeah, and then for a long time, music kind of dominated my calendar, and it did really well with that. And then I hated the music industry, the industry of music, you know. Mm-hmm. So I went back to cooking, and I went to culinary school. I worked full time in a restaurant while I was in culinary school. I went through catering, restaurants, kind of just training, coming up through different uh, uh, under different chefs and stuff like that, and just kept building. And then started opening my own restaurants and doing TV shows. And it's kind of been that whole whirlwind, you know? Did you grow up in Canada? Yeah, I grew up in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Okay. I was born in Trinidad, and at five, my family moved to Edmonton. Man, fire food, is that sort of part of your soul, too? Is that because did you got, did you cook a lot at, like, Open Flame? And Well, my affinity for fire was more about, like, playing with it. <laughs> <laughs> like matches and stuff? I was like, yeah, I guess we used to play a game called Matches, yeah. Uh-huh. I'm not going to get too detailed in that, but uh, I just like... I'm just obsessed with fire, you know. Yeah. So campfire. as a, as a lot of kids are, I think it's something that yeah, for sure you just need to hone it properly. Like if you go the opposite direction, it could be really bad. Yeah, it could be really bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, kind of married the worlds of the the interest in cooking and affinity with fire, and here we are, you know. Was a culinary school in Canada? In Correct. Yeah, in Toronto. Tor- in Toronto, and then did was your first restaurant that you worked at was that in Toronto? No, no, my first restaurant I worked at was in Edmonton when I was like 15 years old. Okay. But then when you went to culinary school, you said you were working in a restaurant as well. Was that? Was yeah, it... I went and worked in like a French bistro. Um, the guy had trained, the chef had trained under a really coveted chef in Toronto area. And uh, so I started working there. It was close to my house, between school and my house. And I would go to school like from six in the morning till three, four, and then uh, go straight to the restaurant and work till midnight, one, and then do it all over again, every, you know, for two years, right? That's tough. And then is that something that – what was that a restaurant that was a fun restaurant to work at or was that one where the chef was pretty tough and it was a really hard time? Uh, it, it, he was cool. He was really cool, friendly dude as long as you do your job properly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, what's your, and also too I've heard that if you're done with your job, you ask others if you could help. Yeah, that's this, just the protocol in the kitchen. You know, there's just always something to do in a restaurant, in the kitchen. So we always help and support each other in a team. You know, that's how you kind of – 
move up and that's how you you know learn right yeah yeah, yeah for sure in the back of your mind were you thinking I could have a show someday or how did this, did someone present something to you that made sense or how, how did this, how did that transition work? Um, after a few years, I was asked to be a chef of a restaurant. Um, so I was doing that and it happened to be around the corner for where a lot of the food network productions were made in Canada at that time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, the production, the producers for that used to come by my restaurant all the time and eat, you know? Okay. So I kind of got to know them after a while. I didn't know they were the food network for a long time, but um, then they started coming to me and saying, you know, we like your food. We come here all the time. Um, are you interested in doing TV? And if so, come and do some auditions. So we kind of started messing around with that. And then after like a couple years, we ended up doing uh, Everyday Exotic, which was the first show I, I did for uh, Food Network Canada. Then we sold it around the world and sold it to Cooking Channel. Yeah, that was I think that was the first time I saw you was on that show. And that was a that was a cool show. It was chill too. Like I think I liked your the whole vibe. Yeah, no, that's what, that's how we are, man. That's how it is, you know. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, you know, you're not you're not high strung. It doesn't it doesn't appear. For I sure. try not to be high strung. Life is too short, though. It, it is. It's it's interesting too. I think that a lot of people might not know that like HDTV and Food Network, all that. There's so much that's done in Canada. If it appears, like I'll I'll watch a show and then I'll realize I'll say I'll think like say it's like a an HDTV channel. I always wonder if it's something in the United States and it's generally something in Canada like Toronto or it just seems like there's a, how, how did I wonder how that this is like maybe information you didn't know but I wonder how that all started like was that something that Food Network start a base there or did they did it start here I mean because I'm so curious do you have any idea well I know that Food Network operates and HGTV operates in Canada independently of how they operate in America just from an infrastructure standpoint okay. and you know when people are looking for content they can share content back and forth and Yo, Canadians are nice, man. People like Canadians, you know. <laughs> I know. I've never. I've any, every time I've gone to Canada, I've had the best time, and I've thought, "Gosh, I wish I lived here." It's really. It's a, it's, it's a great country. I don't well, think I've ever met a mean Canadian. A lot of exports came from Canada, you know, like Jim Carrey is Canadian, mm -hmm. John Candy was Canadian, that Mike whole Myers. SCP. Like Mike Myers, there's a lot of people who come through Keanu Reeves, like come from <laughs> Canada, you know. I think there's probably more people than people realize. Like it seems like, yeah, so. and it seems like Canadians are funny too because there's so many comedians. There's a lot of comedians come out of Canada, man. Russell Peters, Canada, like just a lot, you know. Were, were all your friends funny? Were you? Did you have funny friends? Uh, I grew up with a bunch of funny dudes, yeah. yeah. So I was wondering, like, how that happened? <laughs> how that happened? But anyway, I digress. Man, it's the cold. You got nothing else to do but tell jokes. Yeah, that's true. There is, yeah. There's, there's a certain type of humor too, like in in European countries that are cold. They have like a certain biting humor that. Uh, yeah, for sure, man. That's how you pass the time. Yeah, yeah. So at the, at this time, when you were when you were working on that show, were you traveling around the United States or traveling places to have to eat at barbecue pl places or meat places? No, at that time I was running a bunch of restaurants and really busy with that, and then filming the show. So that. You those time for that. All in my calendar. I didn't have time to be traveling around like that, you know. So when did Men Fire Feud? When did that start up? Or did, was that something too? How did you get the idea for that? Uh, the network kind of came to me. I think I was telling one of the executives about how I was a kid and I liked to play with fire, and they had a, a show that they're sitting on uh, for a while, a concept that they were looking for a host for, and they, I guess, that conversation paired with the, just the proper timing of them looking to kind of execute that show, and they approached me about it and I liked the idea. I met the production company. They were cool. Um, and we banged out a, a, a pilot episode and everybody liked it internally. Then we started banging out episodes and here we are in season eight, right? Yeah. That's so crazy. So what was that first, what was that first place that you went to? What was the first pilot? What, how many you went to the three, two or three places? And I, that never, never went to air, but uh, we were in Houston. I don't remember exactly what we were doing there. But we're in Houston. Let's just jump to your show because it is so cool. It's like I'd like to kind of talk about some places, some highlighted places that you, that notable places. I just recently saw the Tejas episode. Oh yeah, that was good. Yeah, Tejas barbecue and chocolate. How was that? Was that how was going to Tejas? That was really good. I never been to Tejas. I've been to a lot of parts of Texas, you know, and I never been there. It's a small little town, like off the side of the railroad tracks. Yeah, Tumble you know? is small. <laughs> yeah, and yo, they do a really good job. They're really into the chocolate aspect of it, and they started doing the barbecue to kind of offset mm -hmm. uh, interest in the chocolate, you know, and then finding ways to incorporate chocolate into what they do with the barbecue, and it, it was it was really, really good. I probably ate way too much chocolate that day. <laughs> <laughs> their chocolate, yeah, because their chocolate is is like world class chocolate too, which is crazy. Yeah, no, they're bringing in chocolate from all over the world, right, and then roasting it there on side, and so all that stuff. It was really cool, man. Yeah, that episode was was awesome. It was just it was just cool too to see 
to see all the different like different people like the two the two brothers and then their wife like you got it was just a, a great episode hands down yeah yeah it's fun but nice people uh, home team excuse me home team home team barbecue yeah those dudes are cool too we spent a bunch of time with them they're fun those guys are crazy you know like <laughs> they're like really wacky Aaron, aaron's an interesting character um you know, <laughs> these barbecue folks always have these like interesting personalities you know and how did how did the how did the oyster thing come up? Is that something that they just do? The yeah, that's something they do. They throw these events and they do these big oyster thing. That's the kind of thing that they do in South Carolina, right? Those oyster roasts like mm-hmm. that. I've so never been to one, but they look really cool. Yeah, that's part of their tradition and the culture down there. So they're kind of just honoring <laughs> and living on that, and uh, people love it. You know, it was really good. Yeah, nice. got, yeah, because you guys did whole hog and ribs, and yeah, that was that was. Yeah. A, so not that your episodes aren't always solid, but that one was just super. That, that was one's loaded, right? Loaded, yeah. This because that way you give a lot of like, and, like using all those different cookers. It's so interesting. So what? So have you always been like other than I know you're into fire, but have you always been into barbecue? Uh yeah. You know, like my father used to throw Father's Day barbecue every year in Canada, and so I kind of got into it from that. We would do corn, and you know we're West Indian, so we do corn and just a whole bunch of different things. You know, then. I, was, I used to date this girl, and her dad used to like barbecue in like the dead of winter. You know what I mean? So yeah, he that would, guy. <laughs> yeah, he put barbecue right outside the back porch door, and he would like be inside the house, open the sliding door, and like be barbecuing in minus forty degro- degrees Celsius, and then close the door, and like you know, like barbecue ribs in the middle of winter. You know? <laughs> I know that guy. I've I've met that guy many times. <laughs> that's so yeah, yeah. So it's kind of cool. You yeah. Know? So yeah. I, I into it. I saw that kind of thing. I was like, "Oh, that's kind of cool." And I realized that it's a different way of cooking, and uh, there's just many different ways to approach it. So it was interesting to me. How was how was coming to Los Angeles when you went to Moose that the backyard thing? Have you seen? Have you done a lot of underground places, or is that the only underground place you've been? Uh, we've done a couple that kind of do kind of pop up y style, and they've been doing it for a couple years now. So they're building a name. So we have done that, or some have restaurants on the side, and they do that kind of on the side, mm-hmm. but. Moose was really cool, you know, like we went into the hood in East LA. Yeah. Um, and there's a lineup, man. When we were leaving there, there was a lineup around the corner and people kind of know about it, just word of mouth and super sweet family just doing it proper, you know. It was, yeah. it was- Andrew and Michelle are just the great great humans and then it's just cool that they're putting out amazing stuff that people and it's crazy too that people in Los Angeles will wait in some of the neighborhood for that. Yeah, they're clearly not from that neighborhood, but they're coming. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, you get all walks of life. Super nice, super nice couple. So what's this new season? The new season starts? November 28th. Can you tell me about the new season coming up or some highlights for it? Uh, you know, like we're going all, like we're hitting up the spots, you know, like in LA we came to Blood Souls Barbecue. Nice. Uh, we went back into the Carolinas and hit up, you know, the thing is, is like we keep circulating the country and it seems like the interest and the opportunities are increasing. More and more people are doing it. More and more people are interested in it and interested in doing it. Mm -hmm. So there's just, we keep going back to the same areas, but there's just more people doing it. So Mm -hmm. there's uh, targets for us, you know, there's always, yeah, it seems like it's, it's growing, which you, you would, you would think something like barbecue eventually kind of plateau, but it has not even, it's not even close. Yes, yeah, not even close, man. You know, like before it was like, okay, there was Kreitz Market in Lockhart. There was uh, Franklin's in Austin. Uh, Louis Miller. Louis Miller, Rodney Scott. And that, they kind of locked it down, you know, like, and then boom, yeah. all over, you know. So are there, some fa- are there any favorite spots in Toronto that you go to? Uh, I'm hardly ever in Toronto, so I don't actually oh, know. Don't? Restaurants in Toronto. I can okay. tell you restaurants in other parts of the world are really good, but like. Yeah, tell, me some, it, tell me some of your favorite spots. Uh, around the United States, oh man, there's a lot of spots, man. Gel- I'm in LA right now, so Jelena is really cool. Um, Night Market and Song out here, I really love a lot. Um, Blood Souls Barbecue out here is really good. Um, I love Rodney Scott out in Charleston. Lewis in Charleston is really good too. He can Lodge in Dallas is really good. <laughs> you can probably do this. For, you can probably do this for the next twenty minutes. <laughs> I, I could just I could tell you a certain like city and you could... <laughs> yeah like, you know, spots in city. I got on my phone like lists of restaurants and cities and you know I go so many places and I gotta eat you know so now if so if you're in town for guys grocery games how is that like is that is that a full day like I mean or like two like a week or how how does that work I'm just I know people want, would want to know kind of like the Food Network are they pretty they're pretty efficient at what they do right 
Yeah, for sure. Like we come in and we bang out an episode a day type of thing and I'll yeah. stay and do like a, a few episodes at once, you know, mm-hmm. and then jet back out, you know? Yeah. What is that? What's that experience been like at the Food Network and working with them? What can you say it's about that? Cool. I've had a, nothing but really good experience with them. They've been really uh, open and communicative and presenting opportunities and kind of pivoting when we need to pivot on new things. Um you know, it works for them, works for me, and everybody's happy, man. I've been I've been very fortunate with them. Did you did you, when you first started out? Did you have any idea that you'd be doing what you're doing now? No, actually, I wasn't interested in doing food TV. I was just wanted to be a chef in a restaurant, run my restaurant, and just be very have a very simple life like that. And I guess that didn't work out as planned. <laughs> <laughs> For the, for, yeah, thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad it didn't work out because it gives us cool stuff to watch. That's cool. You just follow the path. You know, sometimes the path just opens and you gotta yeah. walk that path, and you know, you just see where it goes, right? You have to put yourself there so that you get the opportunity. You put yourself there. You were working hard, had your head down, and it just it kind of worked out. And you're yeah. gr- and you're a great host, and it shows that you love what you're doing, and that's that's what I think what makes it really great. Thanks, Kev. I appreciate it. No, I definitely. And uh, anything else that you, anything else coming up that you want to promote real quick? Because I, I don't want to take a lot of your time. But I, if there's something, do you have just all, all Food Network stuff, or do you have a book coming up? No, I'm always working on stuff. I don't like to talk about stuff that I'm working on until it actually <laughs> drops. You know, so there's always something coming down the pipe, man. So just know that. Okay, so let's pay attention. So what's the best way to to follow you on social media as well as? Your- Social media everything is at Roger Mooking, at R-O-G-E-R-M-O-O-K-I-N-G, at Roger Mooking, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, like you name it. <laughs> Snapchat? No, I'm joking. No. <laughs> stay on Snap. I stay on Snapchat too. I don't have time for that. <laughs> Don't be coming up in my DMs talking about business. Go to my website and send a proper email, you know? Okay, so that's the way to do it. DMs like, yo, come on. I'm like, dude, I'm not, I don't, I don't, we don't run like that. (laughs) (laughs) So it's rogermooking.com, right? Rogermooking.com slash contact if you want to reach out and make a proper. Request, you know? And so when people type in uh, Roger Mooking on their phone to text somebody, does it turn, does it usually autocorrect to Roger looking? No, uh, Roger Moore comes up. Oh, Roger Moore. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, I'll take that. I'll take that. Oh, I see. Oh, that's such a combo. That'd be great. (laughs) I wish mine. Mine comes up like ty- I type my own name and it comes up Lennon for some reason. I have no idea. It's <laughs> no, but to... now it's like Roger Mooking pops up because once they get past the OO thing and hit the K, there's not a lot of yeah. other opportunities, you know. So that's true. That's so funny. But that's when you start ty- when you type in Roger. Yeah, it's interesting to see what comes up in the in the Google search. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for what you're doing. I totally appreciate it. I dig everything you're doing. I, I every time like if I'm if I'm scrolling around cooking channel, I always scroll ahead to see if your show's on. So I and I definitely tape in. Appreciate that. I really appreciate it. You're, you're doing the right stuff. So thank you so much. Thank you. You too, man. Have a good day. All right. Thanks, Thanks for taking the time. Of course. See you.